Hey everybody, welcome back. We're here uh, with our our third lesson of the, the semester, writing pitches with ledger lines, stems, and octave numbers, getting used to the notational system, treble clef, bass clef, getting used to writing note heads with stems so they look like every other musician in the world will expect them to look, getting used to pitch names, of course, uh, a little bit of music calligraphy, as we said, but also octave numbers, that sort of thing, and a little added information about musical vicissitudes of these things that make it a little bit more interesting. I'm working here with a mishmash of things on the screen, including some PDFs that, that you have uh, that I'm asking you to do for the assignment for tonight. And I'll be going in and out of some things using some audio, hopefully, and representing it uh, with a little bit of a, a keyboard interface here. And uh, I've got other things in my office that can show me uh, <clears throat> audio things if I need them too. But let's talk about um, the theory of what goes into, you know, writing some pitches with, um, uh, as, the, as they want here on treble clef, bass clef, these pitch names with these octave numbers, where are these sort of things. You may remember, uh, as we looked at a few of the pages in the chapter that was given to you here, um, that the uh, the octave numbering is sort of arbitrary, but it, it helps uh, us know which one there is. Sometimes musicians just go with middle C instead of C4. So when I play middle C on, on the keyboard like this, let me bring this down here. This isn't quite the same keyboard gauge. When I play middle C, it sounds right in about in the middle of our middle hearing range, right? When I play it on the acoustic piano, it sounds something like that, even though that piano is not as in tune as this MIDI controller. All right, and you know, it sets up things like the key of C harmonically and melodically. But C4 is in the middle of a range that on the piano uh, exists. Um, uh, with C1 and C8. So there's roughly seven and a half octaves in the, the 88 key keyboard, which is a pretty good representation actually of um, human hearing. It's not that you can't hear pitches that are higher than this. They just don't sound very distinct as pitches. Uh, in fact, the further you go away from the middle of the keyboard or the other end of the keyboard, the less distinct they sound. Like if I play uh, notes way up here, or way down here. It gets harder to tell uh, whether the pitches are right next to one another. They almost sound bigger and fatter and further spaced in the middle of the register. Um, so in the worksheet, let's go right back there for a second. Uh, they're working in both treble clef and in bass clef. They want you to be able to draw some note heads in here. I have a little application that lets me show where I might draw them in here, but I'm not all that good yet. So, uh, and it draws with a big wide tipped uh, pen. So, well, let's take a look at this. This is E4. And why is it E4? It's E4 because on our treble clef, as we reviewed last time, this is the first line E. You may remember that's E, then G, then B. D than F. I like to think of it as every good bird does fly because birds fly up in the air and the treble clef is of course all about higher sounding things. So of course the uh, the real reason that you may uh, may want to remember that this is whatever letter name notes on the on the treble clef is that this is a script G. Its tail wraps around this line here. This line right here we're talking about is of course as you may know good old G like that. So even though every good bird does fly or every good boy does fine or however you learned uh, how that works uh, one thing you're gonna want to remember is that um, is that's going to be G. And so that's A, but that's not A5, that's A that's in the fourth octave. So the, uh, the octave that we're talking about for the fourth octave uh, goes from A, that's a C by the way, and that was a line that we're going to draw. And 
So C4, middle C right there, that ledger line below the staff. It exists the fourth octave from there all the way up to here, this B line here. And then when we get this C note here, that now is C5. Okay, and then that fifth octave, which me electronic five. Oops. The fifth octave goes all the way up to this B up, up here, which is the first ledger line here. So fourth octave, fifth octave, they all start with the letter C, not with the letter A, which might be counterintuitive. Uh, C sort of has a, a bearing as a default point in music, because you may know, uh, bring my, my keyboard back here, that what we have is a C to C, all white keys being naturally a major key without any of the black keys. It's the only major key that's like that. So that's, that's sort of why we do that. Back to the point about what is A5. A5 could be, uh, you might think, this A here, right? What function is on the front of the screen? My, my computer is asking. Uh, that's that's still in the A in the A4 range. A5 is going to be the octave above that, which is actually this ledger line here, and then draw the note ahead so that it's sort of centered around that ledger line like that. Uh, I've got a really thick pen here. And I'm going to be changing that technology uh, as soon as I can. So right above A5, you draw a ledger line, and then the note ahead like that, and that gets you A5. <clears throat> um, you may want to go back to uh, the, um, the lecture on on the piano keyboard and its octave uh, to not only look at these octave numbers like this. I think there's a little bit of a confusing thing. They should show the range here uh, so that you can see that C4 in the fourth octave um, includes everything between this C and this B, and then we get C5, and it includes right, everything through this octave. There's the five octave. 